Okay, there's about as many overdrive pedals out there nowadays as there are guitar players. And for those of us that, in, that use and enjoy overdrives, we've all got our favorites, myself included. Lord knows, I own a shitload of them myself. Seriously, I went through and counted them just before I turned on the camera, and I think I've got, currently got 43 of them in my collection right now. And just like any other type of pedal out there, they've all got their own different, uh, you know, different features and different circuit types and circuit topology and you know, uh, things that they're based on. And you know, and they sound a little bit different here, and they, you know, they 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 do something a little bit different there, and uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And because of that, like I said, we all have our favorites. Now, if I were to put a bunch of them all in succession of each other, all set to the exact same settings, played into the exact same. Uh, you know, the exact same rig, the exact same riff, everything is identical, identical except for the pedal that is turned on. We are definitely going to hear some significant differences between all of them, and I am going to demonstrate that here in just a little bit. However, there is a very, very strange phenomenon on YouTube that I have struggled with uh, for a number of years. Almost nobody runs an overdrive directly into a, a clean amp of some kind and relies simply on the overdrive pedal's tone itself as the basis of their tone. As the name suggests, an overdrive pedal is designed to be ran into the front end of an already distorted amp, thereby enhancing the sound of said distorted amp. That's what overdrive pedals do. You know, they are a little bit different from distortion pedals, which are designed to be run into a clean amp, thereby essentially giving your, uh, your clean amplifier another distortion channel that it doesn't already have. So here's the phenomenon that I have noticed from YouTube viewers the last few years. Viewers always start screaming when I demo an overdrive pedal running into the front end of a distorted amplifier because you can't hear the tone of the pedal. So over the last couple of years, I have started demoing overdrive pedals into the clean channel of an amplifier so that you can hear the sound of the actual pedal, even though the likelihood of anybody watching that video that will buy that pedal based on that video is not going to run at that, in that particular manner. I don't understand it, that's just the way that it seems to be because ever since I started demoing overdrive pedals the exact same way that I demo distortion pedals, the bitching and moaning has stopped. Once upon a time, a few years back, I did a shoot out of a bunch of boss pedals that still gets, you know, still generates a few you know, views every now and again, still even to this day, a few years later. Uh, and I'm still hearing the same complaint about them all over the place. They all sound the same. Of course, they all sound the same. I was running them into a distorted amp. Hence, the purpose of this video. When using an overdrive pedal as a boost, and I'll explain that in a second, when using an overdrive pedal as a boost, is there really that much of a damn difference from one pedal to the next? I say no. Now, let's clarify this a bit. Overdrive pedals, when used as a boost, most of those players will run them into the front end of their already distorted amplifier, turn the level control all the way up, the gain control all the way down, and then set the tone control if there is one accordingly, and off they go. The idea behind doing this is it tightens up the bottom end of the frequency spectrum, giving you know metal, metal players in particular really, really like the, uh, the, the tight bottom end that that produces. Myself included, I am not debating uh, using an overdrive pedal, pedal in that method whatsoever. That's not, I'm not criticizing that at all. So given that, especially the fact that this method is particularly popular among metal guitar players right now, uh, I am, I'm generally pretty active in a lot of guitar and uh, pedal groups on Facebook, particularly the ones that are uh, related to various different metal genres. And all the time, you hear, you know, you see people, people posting uh, about, you know, what's your favorite boost for such and such high gain amplifier, whatever it may be. And then a great big long thread of a bunch of different overdrive pedals ensues from there. You know, of everybody sharing their favorites. So we have nine different overdrive pedals that we are using for this experiment here in this video. All different types of circuits, all different types of features. All of them will be set to the same settings. Level control all the way up, gain control all the way down. And as a control, if there is a tone control on, on the pedal, it'll be set right at 12 o'clock noon on all of them. So as we can say, we have the exact same settings on all of these pedals as close as humanly possible. Uh, and again, different circuit types, you know, some of these are, some of these are tube screamer circuits. Some of these are Klon circuits. Some of these are blues driver circuits, uh, a couple of blues breakers circuits, et cetera, et cetera. All righty. So let's go through, uh, let me show you everything I'm using here. These are the ones that 
uh, made the cut. Just, you know, I wanted some variety. Well, like I said, I wanted to use some different, uh, different types of circuits, different, uh, just a little bit different, everything. Uh, the saucy box, uh, the way huge saucy box, uh, this is an overdrive pedal that, uh, that honestly this one made the cut because I already had it out here because I was using it uh, in another video just last week. Here we have the full tone OCD. Uh, this is the version 1.3, which is a little bit uh, a little bit harder to find. Uh, but I have uh, that's one of my all time favorite overdrives. I've used that one uh, here on my channel a number of times. Joyo King of Kings. This is their clone of the famous. Uh, Analog Man King of Tone pedal. This is basically the exact same blues breaker style uh, overdrive, basically twice in the, in the same housing. Both of these sides are pretty much identical. Uh, for a little bit of variety, this is the Marshall Jackhammer. This is both an overdrive and a distortion. You can see here, uh, I have it set straight up. This is the overdrive mode. That's how we're going to that's how we're going to demonstrate this pedal. I uh, got to get some boss love going in here. This is the blues driver, the Waza craft edition of the blues driver. You know, I wanted to hear both the uh, both circuits of that one. This one here, of course, is the uh, famous Boss uh, SD1 Super Overdrive. You know, ton of history behind this pedal. This particular one is the 40th anniversary edition that came out uh, uh, earlier this year. It's the exact same thing as the as the standard yellow one that we've seen everywhere. Exact same pedal. The only difference is the housing. Uh, this is the TS9DX. This is the Turbo Tube Screamer out of the nine series pedals. This is the one that's got the four different uh, four different modes. We'll check all those out while we're at it. I thought this I thought this one would be kind of cool to demo as opposed to uh, the you know the standard TS9. Electroharmonic Soul Food. This is a Klon circuit uh, style overdrive. Really really good sound of pedal. I like this one a lot. And last but not least, we have the Tube Pilot from TC Electronic. This is their clone of the uh, the famous Chandler Tube Driver that you uh, may or may not be familiar with. This one actually has a preamp tube on the inside of it, as does the Chandler Tube Driver that it is a clone of. So, all of that, and last but not least, which you may or may not be able to see, I do have a uh, an ISP Decimator 2 noise reduction pedal here at the very end of the chain before it goes into the amplifier. Uh, because this is liable to be pretty noisy. That is the only other thing in this in this entire chain before it's going to the amp. So going into the clean channel of my Laney IRT Studio, here's what each one of these pedals sounds like individually.
Now let's conduct the exact same shootout going into the high gain channel of this amplifier. As you can hear, the tonal difference between each one in this situation is nominal at best. I know what the problem is. Let's try the rhythm channel instead. Maybe it was just maybe it's just that that you know, maybe it's just that that lead channel that was the problem. Let's try the rhythm channel instead. That's got that that'll fix it.
Okay, well maybe that's not it. Well, let's try active pickups. Bueno, huh? Okay, well, how about uh, let's try uh, baritone tuning. I think I've made the point that when using an overdrive pedal as a boost, it doesn't seem to matter much because the basis of your tone is the high, is the, the amplifier that that overdrive pedal is merely enhancing. The overdrive pedal is just tightening up the bottom end. That's really all it's doing. It is adding very, very little in the way of uh, in the way of EQ or tone or any of any of those other qualities. Now, this video is likely to ensue a shitstorm, which I am more than prepared for. Uh, personally, that's the fun part of doing videos like this. But for now, myth debunked. What do you think? Myth debunked? Or am I just totally full of shit? I'll wait.